Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. Mamma Mia. <laughs> That's all I yeah. can say. <laughs> Mama oh, my Mia. guest and I have had quite a quite an experience, quite an adventure already together. And so um it's just maybe befitting what it's like to be alive on this planet. Um, challenges, changes, but a lot of resilience and ability to withstand and keep going forward. And anyway, sisterhood always prevails, the powerful feminine energy. I am yes, excited finally because, first frozen. <laughs> yeah, in, in a little bit, I'm going to oh have gosh. Sandra, aka Akora. She will be here on the show to talk about being a psychic medium, a consciousness mentor, an intuitive artist, and star seed. Akora is here to support you in your awakening process. This is the Dare to Dream podcast. This show won the COVR Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show, listed in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. It is one of the high-ranking self-improvement Apple podcasts, nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and for a Webby Award. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. If you would like to do energy work with them or become a facilitator, go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com or accessconsciousness.com. I am Debbie Dashinger and I am a book writing coach who shows spiritual messengers the steps to write a highly engaging book. I also turn your book into a guaranteed international best-selling book, and I teach you how to become your own publicist for how to book powerful podcast and radio interviews to become the number one authority in your industry. I'm about to roll out some specials around that, so if you want to know book writing or to be interviewed, you're a spiritual messenger and you're ready to be visible and increase your business and let your tribe find you, just sign up for my um, my newsletter. It's also got a free gift attached. And this way you will find out as soon you'll be on the front lines when the specials start coming down the pike. Um, it's time. It's time to turn up the noise for all spiritual messengers. It's why we're here right now. So if you're ready to be visible, I'm ready to teach you how. Go to debbie-shinger.com, D-E-B-B-I. D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com. So yay, today I am speaking with the amazing Akora. She has been channeling and a medium since childhood. And since childhood, she could see various entities, most of all ETs. And Akora made her first astral journey when she was only four years old. And through this experience, understood that we are not our bodies, so Sandra, a.k.a. Akora, grew up in a strict Catholic family where spirituality was classified as occultism. And at the age of 18, she had a suicide attempt and went through the dark night of the soul. She understood that it is her job when she came through to the other side to work as a channel medium. And today, Akora helps other star seeds around the world learn and assimilate and become who they truly are. You can learn more at her website, which is psychicmedium-akura.com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Akura to Dare to Dream. Welcome. It's so great to have you. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Thank you. I'm so honored. Thank you for inviting me to your show. I'm very grateful. And you are in Germany right now, is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm from Germany. <laughs> and I'm so you can Germany. actually say my last name. Yeah, I can. Dachinger <laughs> in German. <laughs> Everybody here says Dachinger. It's fine. It mm -hmm. has a nice ring to it. But yes, it's Dachinger. It's, it's an Austrian name. And so I love when somebody can actually pronounce it correctly. And so I wanted mm -hmm. to start with your name. Uh, so. I researched your name, and mm -hmm. Akura is a variation of the Japanese word Sakura, or in English, uh -huh. cherry blossom. Yeah. Yeah, so your born name is Sandra, but you go by the name of Akura, quite beautiful. What was your journey to get to the name Akura? It came intuitively through. 
for two years ago. <laughs> yeah, intuitively the name came through. So I heard the name and then I said, yeah, why not? I call myself a Kurano. Yeah, it came through spontaneously. <laughs> I had a wish. So yeah, as I started with my um, website and with my YouTube channel, then I got the idea. Yeah, I call myself a Kura. And I saw more the energy of the sun, which is quite interesting. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it is wonderful to rename ourselves because especially as women, our last mm -hmm. name, right? It's nothing. Mm -hmm. It was our fathers or husbands or uh, maybe wives or, you know, whatever the connection is, but yeah. somehow we end up with something that isn't our energy. And whereas in indigenous cultures, they give you a name, like they understand your personality and your path and they channel that name to you. And I've always thought that's way more powerful to have mm -hmm. something that's given to you like that. Or like you said, you intuited. Intuitive. Yeah. 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 It came to me. <laughs> that's beautiful. Um, and I'll tell you, I also looked you up there's this cool website. So I'm going to give it away to everybody. Everybody be out there looking stuff up. There's this great website called myfirstnamerocks.com. It's super fun. It actually tells you about your name. And I have to say, it's kind of very accurate. So I want to read what they oh, said cool. about your name, Akura, and see your thoughts on this. I thought it was pretty oh. amazing. Oh, wow. Interesting. <laughs> Akura is a name that evokes logical reasoning. You are possibly intelligent, intuitive, graceful, and even a psychic. Oh, Interest oh in spirituality gosh. and mysticism is a strong possibility in your quest for truth. Sometimes you are not friendly and do not like to spend time with other people. Your heart's desire is an adventure. Freedom is essential to your happiness. Traveling, meeting new friends, and getting new experiences can add variety to your life. You are no stranger to change. You embrace it. Your sharp mind makes you curious about many things. True? Wow. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, I say half, half. <laughs> Not being friendly, I don't know. <laughs> hilarious i believe i'm friendly yeah i believe so but psychic this is this is really interesting psychic, um, yeah it was it was in many ways good yeah i love it to talk to people and i love it to learn many different languages and i love it to travel i'm psychic yeah that's right and i love change i don't want to stand still that's right <laughs> wait did you come into the planet at a great time congratulations yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, we are going through very strong shifts at the moment. Yes, of course. It's very wild. It's very <laughs> wild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going to get to that. I do want to talk about what this is right now and what we can expect and what you perceive. Your channeling information comes from source, right? Which is a weird mm -hmm. thing to point up because it is everywhere. It's in this bottle, yeah. right? Yeah, but, uh, everywhere. Source, angels, ETs. Can you talk about that, those relationships, what the process is for you? Mm -hmm. What I'm getting about a star seeds is we go through a dark night of the soul again. It feels like it's a second awakening <laughs> again. And we simply expand our consciousness now. We feel and see more, we perceive more. Our bodies are changing slowly. Maybe you change your diet now. Maybe you feel, ah, oh, I want to eat much less meat, for example, or you need more water suddenly. So yeah, we, we slowly become lighter, our energy, our bodies as well. And that's a process. So it's beyond exhausting. Yeah, when this high vibrational codes suck, are hitting the earth, um, we let go of everything which is not serving our highest good. It's like we go through a second awakening again. Mm. Yeah, a lot of people, jobs changing, relationships changing, choices changing. Uh, some people I know feel like they're at this precipice and don't know the next right step. Mm -hmm. Can you talk mm -hmm. about that? And how can people navigate this time? Yeah, the heart, <laughs> your heart is the key. Mm -hmm. So your intuition always speaks to us. So when you have a wide open heart, you know exactly what to do. It's very, very simple. but 
it's like the, the old system, right? Taught us our intuition is not true. So all what matters is your head, this, um, and now we are guided back to our hearts and actually we all have the power to do so. Mm. So my first tip is your heart is the strongest protection protection during the storm be the eye of the storm be the lighthouse in the storm so and always access to your house timeline very important don't stay so much focused on the darkness because when you just stay focused on the darkness see what happens with your energy many people say they feel beyond exhausted tired confused the spirit of confusion yeah i see by so many people i don't know what to believe anymore i'm so confused <laughs> and this happens when you try to understand Understand spirituality too much with your mind but you cannot it's your heart and when you stay heart-centered you are not confused mm. that's what i do as best as i can i access to my highest timeline i think also to ride the storm is really important you know ride the eye of whatever you're going through because sometimes more is revealed in its own divine time and i know it's not comfortable and sometimes we yeah, wait for it, wait for it, like keep doing you and the best you you can do. And I think clarity comes sometimes. Yeah. Of course, especially when you're taking action. So when you trust your heart, you know, you can be so proud of you because finally you made it. And then you will change for real because you're taking taking action as well yeah. so what i so what is new earth in your opinion because many people they just they focused on the problem this is what we see now in the system yeah we just see the problems problem here problem in the neighbor's country everywhere just problems but we don't see the solution so and this is what i share with my community too stay focused on the solution and access to your house timeline and always keep in your mind what is new earth in your opinion so what can you do now to make Earth a better place? Because your heart always speaks to you. Always. And you know what to do. Be it doing an artwork or travel, meet friends, channel, whatever it is. So your soul knows the answer. Mm. This is what I feel the global process now. We are simply gathered back to our hearts and back to our soul. Beautiful. Astral travel. Mm -hmm. started when you were four so it, it yeah. doesn't feel very natural to you then it happened <laughs> tell did, me about I didn't it control it <laughs> yeah i was three or four years old i can remember i drank an apple juice <laughs> i was taking a seat on a chair and i drank an apple juice and then suddenly my soul left my body during a short time and then i saw myself sitting on a chair so I saw my body sitting on the chair and I dropped my upper shoes. My soul left the body and then I returned during a few seconds, I remember. And then I was staring at my hand. So I was four years old. Hey, what is this? <laughs> this is not me. <laughs> what is this? This body, it feels so strange. What is this? <laughs> yeah, it happened. So my soul took the lead. <laughs> And now do you do it on the regular? Is it something you engage in astral travel? Can you do yeah. it by will? You can, but I'm more a fan of surrendering because I believe your soul always knows the answer. And when I just surrender, my soul knows what to do. So many times I don't tell my soul, hey, I want to do astral protection. So <laughs> it just happens. So I stay in my bed, I close my eyes and whoosh, and, and it happens suddenly. <laughs> it's, it, it feels to me like my soul knows the answer. Then I pick up some information, <laughs> some information I need, and then my soul returns. <laughs> this is how I see it. Yeah, but you can train it and you can control it as well. Yeah, you can. It's like when I read a book, it's the same. <laughs> I do the same. I do intuitive reading. So I just pick up what resonates with me. Even when I read books, I'm guided to the right sides. And then, you know, <laughs> that's what Where I do. do you go when you astral travel? Where do you go? Oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> I share this on YouTube. <laughs> 
<laughs> many times. These astral travelers are very weird at the moment. <laughs> I have many times astral projections about VIPs. So, <laughs> what is that? VIPs? Um, famous people ah. like Elon Musk and so on. <laughs> Why yeah, I see, uh, I see star stars. Yeah, I see them. I see Elon Musk, for example. <laughs> I saw him a few times <laughs> in an astral projection. I cannot say for sure why I see this, uh, what my soul is doing there. But yeah, very weird. Or I also do astral projections outside the Earth. This happens also a few times. Beautiful. That I see myself, yeah, yeah, as a galactic being that i have quests on other planets <laughs> oh cool so does that are these like um concurrent lifetimes multi-dimensional lifetimes or multi-dimensional lifetimes i believe yes it's like it's like when you know the movie avatar do you know the movie avatar Very yeah well, the same yeah. it's like this body sleeps and then your soul suck returns into your original body <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So what what do you know about yourself as a star seed? What planets? Like I can tell mm -hmm. you my lineage, I am aware of it. What is your lineage? Mm -hmm. Basically it's Octorian, but mm -hmm. I have multiple connections. Also Pleiades, <laughs> Andromeda, mm -hmm. is strong, a Sirius as well, and Mintaka. Yeah, Mintaka Orion is also coming through. But my origin is Octorus, yes. And do, does your starseed family connect with you? Yeah, I can. And they talk to me too. It's like we have a conversation. Sometimes they appear in my astral projections. They call me <laughs> and I see them. <laughs> it's very interesting. Yeah, but I saw many different physical bodies, to be honest, because it seems like I exist in many different dimensions at the same time. <laughs> It's like I, I jump up to many different dimensions. So that's why I have many different bodies, if you want so. Well, that's exciting. Um, do, Very do, exciting. <laughs> do the extra, and I know it's so weird to call them extraterrestrials. It doesn't seem fitting, but for want of a better term or starseed family, either one, do they help you? Do they give you guidance? Do they give you, like, are they prophetic? Do they give you prophecy about this is going to happen, so make sure to do that or watch out for mm -hmm. things or hear what's here's what's coming? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I receive visions. Basically, I receive visions with my third eye or when I sleep during lucid dreaming, I receive messages. Or spontaneously, when I go for a walk, when I take a seat in a train, when I brush my teeth, <laughs> so they call me, <laughs> and then I receive pictures, basically. Mm -hmm. But they what don't they talk a lot about the global uh, awakening. They don't talk so much about it, my team. So because I asked them a few times, so what's going on with the system? What's going on with humanity? They don't talk so much about it. And that's interesting. What is, um, what are they telling you? What are they suggesting that you do? Not the private stuff, obviously, but things that you can share that might resonate with us. Mm -hmm. At first, nothing is as it seems. So it's all just a show and you will be surprised. And they are very excited to see the shift. This is what they say. And they say, stay heart-centered. Mm. Always stay heart centered. So learn to discern with your heart, trust your intuition. It's over and over the same message I receive. Yeah. And that they also speak about connection, that we spiritual people unite, that we build new communities, for example, that we have a physical meeting too, that we meet each other in real. This is what my team is telling me also over and over and over again. It seems important. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does seem important. So, uh, and what does that mean exactly to stay heart centered? Mm -hmm. That you trust the first messages here in your heart. So when I receive messages from my team, it feels like this. I, I feel this, not pressure, but it feels like suck, a push here in my heart space. Hmm. So the first thing you hear, that's that's kind of hard because then the mind. And then suddenly I receive right? visions. Oh, sure. Yeah, the first. Yeah, 
yeah, of course. And when you do breathwork practices or meditation, so then you know the difference. You can discern better if it's your head or if it's your heart. It's very easy. Actually, it is easy because we were born with it. <laughs> A child knows. A child knows they are so connected. I was really <laughs> curious because, you know, in your bio, it says grew up in a strict Catholic home where this kind of spirituality that you and I embody and our tribe and many, many people out there was considered occultism. So how interesting to be born one way, mm -hmm. but to be, hear a label about something that actually is what you are. Are you still in touch with your family? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they don't, they don't understand. <laughs> they don't, uh-uh. But I know, so that's why I don't expect something from them. Yeah. So they are just happy when they see me happy. Oh, good. <laughs> this is all what matters, but I, they don't understand, but it's okay. So when I was younger, it was, it was dark, to be honest. And it was very hurtful because I believed I'm evil. Yeah, I'm doing very evil things. I worship Satan. This was dark This is what me. you and thought. I, I, this is what you were taught. Yeah, 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 of course. And I was ashamed of being myself. So I was afraid of seeing all my friends, all these entities. Yeah, stay away. And I was so afraid to do this work very afraid to doing it because I was so ashamed of being myself and uh, never spoke about it. I always kept it as a secret. How did you turn that corner? How did you step into fully embodying yourself oh, and realizing this is not the devil. This is actually of the light. <laughs> this is a beautiful gift you were given and you have beautiful friends who visit you, whether others can see them and interact or not, they exist. How did you, because that must have been quite a healing to come from the dark night of your soul. Mm -hmm. When I was 18, I turned into the age of 18 and then I had this suicidal attempt. Yeah, I tried to take my own. Yeah, because it was... To be honest, it was close and there was a voice uh, which warned me and this lovely voice said, please don't do this. Please don't do this because your life will change. Yeah, and I gave it a chance and then I, yeah, started to change my life slowly. It was it's, really a process. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you wanted to commit suicide and then you hear mm -hmm. a voice that says, please do not, please do not like trust, move forward. Um, there's purpose here and you trust yeah. the voice. Mm -hmm. And then what? I mean, because there's still a lot of pieces to pick up there. Of course, of course. Yeah, I have many mental uh, issues as well. Um, sociophobia, for example, I was afraid of talking to people because I believed I'm evil, right? Mm -hmm. It was not just um, I grew up in a Catholic family. It was also because of my physical appearance, because I always was very petite, androgen, yeah. And then many people believed I'm a boy, you know, I got bullied at school, at kindergarten, and you know, so much for me. So and I had to go through this as well that I see, hey, I'm not stupid. I was afraid of leaving the house as well. I just stayed in my room and I had to overcome all this first. <laughs> it was a process, yeah. And I think as I turned to 24, 23, yeah, I saw the first results. Then my life get better and better and better and better. Mm -hmm. Amazing, because that's, that's a huge healing. And I applaud mm -hmm. you for that. Because I know right now, I think on Instagram alone, you have 56,000 followers. And I mean, I know you have a lot of people who know who you are and follow you and um, love your message and love what you do. So mm -hmm. thank God you, thank goddess, you held on, you know, and listened to that voice that you really trusted mm -hmm. and didn't hurt yourself, didn't end your life, but instead chose to come out of the dark night of the soul into the light and really say, this is me, period. I'm, I'm me and welcome to my life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very grateful to be here. 
yeah of course it was a long way but it was worth it really mm. so i started with youtube for 10 years ago <laughs> i had different channels before and it was a challenge for me yeah but it helped me so much so i was brave i had social phobia and i did it anyway i worked as a sales advisor in a fashion store and i had social phobia <laughs> so i always faced my fears this was the years <laughs> that's huge and so, so many questions, but I'm going to go with this one. So do you have information for star seeds and their mission or our mission? Do you have information for us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about uh, unity of spiritual division, spiritual confusion. And I see a war in the spiritual community right now too. So much traumas shadows are coming up to the surface and the first message i receive is see with your hearts again unite because we are all in this together mm -hmm. so and we star seeds yeah we came here for a mission most of us we are here to help humanity we help to raise the frequency of earth and because we are here We guide the people and earth and be it artwork that you spread your happiness, your joy, if you channel whatever it is. So you help humanity in expanding their consciousness. So this is us. And many of us just agreed to this event because we knew this will happen. We talk about the global shift, the global event. So we feel that this, this energies, they are increasing so many high vibrational cults hitting the earth. The sun activity is pretty strong. The solar flares, almost every day, boom, we get bombarded with solar flares now. It's pretty intense. And we feel the change. And many star seeds just agreed for this because we want to help humanity. So we want to show them other ways to live and to see beyond. We also open the gate to spirituality that people see, hey, this is not from Satan. It's not evil. So it is us. <laughs> Our cosmic team is us in the future. <laughs> this is how I see it. And yes. every star seed has a little bit of other mission. Yeah, I, I love what you just said. That's exactly why I do what I do, Akura. I mean, I have other things I sing. I am in shaman school right now and learning a lot of uh, energy healing techniques and et cetera. And because I really do love teaching spiritual messengers in particular, how to get mm -hmm. visible, how to start getting booked and be their own publicist, like it's for real, because I get that these people are here with great gifts like yourself and great purpose, and you can't hide it under a bushel, right? Then your mission is not successful. <laughs> you need to use this life and your light to be way more visible and way more vocal and articulate, whether you're writing books or speaking on stage or being interviewed, there's so many ways to do that or doing the YouTube videos. But yes, it is time, really time for spiritual messengers to fully be out there for this fascinating time on our planet. Of course, many star seeds awake now. It's so beautiful to see the star seed community, boom is rising so beautiful to see finally <laughs> yeah absolutely i agree 100 um, percent. when i changed this show um probably three years ago i just i just became so needing to have conversation galactically ufo et even people who channel ets like it just became where my hunger was. And there was a question in my mind, like if I change some of the energy of this show and go from, you know, very transformational channeling to also opening up into this world, that is my world too, what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm amazed. I was like, should I change the name of my show? Should I, I did nothing. And everybody followed. There was never a question. There's so much support 
and all new people coming aboard. And so I agree with you. So many people have been awoke and finally feel like it's safe to come out and have that mm -hmm. voice. And then other people just now like coming into it and saying, whoa, this is incredible. And that we have a tribe together to have these conversations. Yes, of course. And it's a big honor how we talk and that we meet each other slowly. It is so beautiful to see because many starseeds, they went through the loneliness. Almost every starseed I know, they were very lonely. Um, yeah, and now finally we rise and from dark to light, right? <laughs> yeah. We see each other and we meet each other finally. And it's so beautiful to see because every starseed has a little bit of other mission and different gifts to share. And we support and we help each other. What I'm also getting is the collective as well. They slowly feel something is strange and they do research and they are guided to us slowly too. Slowly, they do research about meditation, yoga, Reiki, or about... the global energy and then they see us. So, yeah. You did a video recently um, and you put yourself side by side with Sinead O'Connor and it was an old uh, music video of her singing. And so was there yeah. a reason, is it, is it about the uh, look that you you like to rock the look? <laughs> no, it was intuitive, intuitive. I had the idea. So I did a reaction video about Lady Diana first, mm -hmm. and then I had the idea, Sheet O'Connor as well. Yeah. And I'm inspired by her. She, yes. But not just not just her. I loved Annie Lennox a lot as well. Mm -hmm. She's also bold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or uh, other artists, Unique. Yeah. Yeah. So, How is it, by the way, for somebody like me who is like a lion's <laughs> mane of hair? Um, and the most <laughs> I've ever done is, I think, for a few years, I had a super short like this. But how is that? Is it free? Does it feel good? Yeah, free. Free. So I do it time after time. So when I was 18 years old, I changed my life completely. And the first I did was I went to the hairdresser <laughs> and I had long hair, very long hair. And then I cut them off to down to the chest this. And then I have many different hairstyles since then and many different hair colors. <laughs> it feels free. Yeah. Mm. For me, it's quite the opposite. When I'm bold, I'm better in channeling. <laughs> <laughs> it's very strange yeah because many people say your hair are your cosmic antennas right? right so you can talk to the universe but for me it's the other way around but i'm bold i'm channeling better <laughs> very strange maybe, maybe it has <laughs> access to your follicles your hair follicles so the information comes in quicker i don't know i already had this when i was a child so i always told my parents i want to have short hair <laughs> but it didn't allow me you know ah you are a girl you need long hair and so on <laughs> and I always wanted to have short hair I'll bet. Now I understand why yeah <laughs> but you know plus Arcturians yeah right yeah I hair. think it's yeah I think it's because of this yeah I think so it too. reminds me of my cosmic self yeah I love that <laughs> that's cool and look I'm 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 Andromedan uh, not originally, originally Elohim, then Andromedan quite a bit, and then a lot of Lyra, right? And so th this makes yeah, sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. of course, the Lyran energy. 100%. Yeah. Cool. And you yeah, have it comes this... through strong Lyra. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, girl. See it, your hair and the way you talk. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, beautiful. I, I relate a lot, you know, and for folks who feel I'm a star seed of, you start looking up the planet and the natures of the people. And by the way, something that's very interesting about that too is sometimes to find out what physical ailments you can have being from a particular uh, universe, planet, people, and what it's like being human. And some of the like Lyrans often will have autoimmune issues. Um, there's other things too. <laughs> But that's one of the things. Um, Arcturians tend to have uh, digestive issues. And so you have to be mm -hmm. careful, like more plant-based is good for you. Um, no uh -huh. sugar, things like that. Like you just, you have to think about where you came from and what you ate. Right? Interesting. Yeah, this makes totally sense to me. 
I always felt that every person needs different food. <laughs> yes. I always felt it. So you cannot say for sure. You must trust your body again. So your body is very intelligent. And it's so funny that you talk about this because I eat plant-based food. I eat vegan food. So... <laughs> totally makes sense again. <laughs> it does make sense. And, you know, I'm doing a detox right now. I'm in the getting towards the end of it that it was, um, I'm so glad I did it. I, I had a lot of doubts in the beginning because it's a lot of preparation, mm -hmm. but it's part of the shamanic yeah. school I'm in. And it yeah. is fully plant-based and took so much out that just to really clean out the body, clean out the system. Yeah. But I, before I started, I made a commitment to myself. Like mm -hmm. you can do anything for seven or 10 days. Like, come on, like in the lifetime, that's not a lot of life. And so I said, you could do anything for that amount of time. And I just I fully committed. I'm so glad it's been really interesting. Wonderful. I've, I've gone in and out of veganism. Um, and there's no doubt I used to be quite a carnivore and I've, I now tend more towards that with lighter, when I do have protein, lighter ideas of protein, mm -hmm. I just see the body's happy. The body says- Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I noticed as many people say the same, it's what I said, that even your diet is changing as well because our bodies are getting lighter, brighter and then our- Our body needs really different food. It happens with yeah. humanity as well. So always, always uh, trust your body. Your body knows exactly what you need. It's the same. So actually, we know, but we learned this is all what matters, right? Trust <laughs> your mind. <laughs> your intuition, uh, it's just illusion. <laughs> That's great. I like that sound. Um, there <laughs> is a quote uh, that you have from the Pleiadians, which is, as you come into the age of light, worlds will open that you never knew existed. I want to know, I feel like that may have been channeled to you, but given to you. What does that mean specifically? What are the worlds the Pleiadians are referring to that are going to open up that we never knew existed? Mm -hmm. Your heart, your heart opens the gate to all dimensions. So when you open your heart, you will see beyond everything, beyond all illusions. And when I tune into the Pleiadians realm, it is so kind, gentle, um, the unicorns, mm. fantasy, orbs, dragons. It is so, mm. it's like you live in a dream world and everything exists. So everything what your heart desires exists. And there is no, you don't have to wait. Let's say, you want to have muscles. You don't need to go to the gym first. You just, you you use your heart space and suck. Suddenly you have muscles. It's like you, you don't have to wait. And this is the world they talk about. So everything is already here. And this is just an illusion that we believe, oh, we don't have any money, for example. But it's already here. Because abundance is your birthright. And this is what they're talking about. So everything is already here. And in higher dimensions, it's visible immediately. Boom. This. <laughs> You're talking about instant manifestation. Yeah. Instant manifestation. Yes, of course. Of course. Beautiful. Um, I want to ask you too about, you had uh, something about Mary Magdalene and the sacred rose. I am so into that whole... <laughs> Mm -hmm. all of the truth of who she is, was, et cetera. Do you channel Mary Magdalene or do you have a connection with her? Mm -hmm. I have a connection to her. Yeah. Yeah. Many times I channel her energy and I sing in tones and I speak in that language. This is what I do most. Her energy is very gentle, lovely, but mm -hmm. she's very fiery. Mm -hmm. She's strong. Very fiery. That's what I'm getting about her. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, she had to be to be paired up with Yeshua, right? Mm -hmm. And to be the right mate for him, the wife, the 
the powerful other healer. She had to be to witness what he went through. She had to be to be the one who had the book of love and all the information, right? That went on until the end of her life, um, including her children's lives. I mean, so to do what, to be who she was and including the temple of Isis, et cetera, that she had to be quite magnificent. And I'm a little bit jealous that you've met her because I would like to very much. Yeah, it's very easy to dive into her energy. So many times I use just my third eye, my imagination, hmm. close my eyes and I dive into your energy. And then I start to sing and speak in light language. And then I feel a connection to her. And I do the same when I channel extraterrestrials. Hmm. I just close my eyes and I use my third eye and then I ask them and they will appear. <laughs> well, since you mentioned that, and I have seen... <laughs> Um, I've seen what you do. I've mm -hmm. allowed it to, you know, be part of myself while I was listening and enjoying your gift. Would you offer us, and I will let this take whatever form is organic, channeling, light language, the singing, the speaking, anything. I would love, love, love to be a witness to this and to share this with the audience. Yes, I can. <laughs> I can do it. Thank you. So shall I start or? Yes, please. The Super. Okay, let's do this. First of all, let's relax. And stay in this one moment. Take a deep, deep breath first down into your belly. And feel the connection to your heart. Breathe in. Breathe out again. Feel the energy. Breathe in. And breathe out again. Feel your heart and your soul. Your soul is always here. Breathe in. And breathe out again. We start with the Octurians first. Simi shisha muasaya. Shemaya sarehea muahama. Alles nekeo ustuyo shenayari ya maya le teasa. Histayano ya karete naya. It's so easy. Dama akasherete least. Suyo no tu yomuk ok ara taya maletis. Suyo no tikaya naya kirit. Shayo musaya. Elishna kari ahumayele seneya. Here's the answer. Atanareya. Lishnu ushtareya. Trust your heart. Shumukusharich. Lilinis. Dumoyas. Tatkerich. Dunosa. Hamoya tanarita kuchamaya talis. Tinishia. Shano kurea astanaya. You are divine. Alessneria tamaya. Histanoyotunose. Shinikiria. Fill and see with your hearts as to nukuru hamala stahikis dilit at namukaya batteries nuyo to nuya. Fill your soul sta ayat nikiri sinuyo to mosea kala re sanaya. Lead to your ma. You are protected akut anari tanaya. You are divine sanaya tishinilit. Musuyo ist ikis aret nuyo. Amukora nashna yasanaya, lista roya. Stay grounded during the ascension, shanoya, akarichini lisanaya. Tisaya no no master, ataya tesi. Uikio kush, shakuch, hisirit. Mo alas de mea, astensea atensinia. Kuchumori litinisia, dinia. Stay heart centered, sahana rea. You are protected, akua, ahama, leserik, ikiochunu, rotanese, sinea. You are protected, you are blessed, shenesere. You are protected, you are blessed, sana atane, sheshemoya. Hitinis, kia, oya, kaleserit. Basanare, ahumaya, tashene, lisikiri, atanasaya. 
the angels are coming through. Semasha. Your cosmic team is always with you. Shakarish. Kasu. You are blessed, Akirit. Okay. <laughs> I'm done now. <laughs> Oh, thank you. I had my eyes closed for that. That was that was really beautiful. And I'm you know, I'm in a light language group. We meet every other week. And mm -hmm. um so I try my hand at this and and so it's amazing and I really appreciate what you're able to do because the fact that you can even translate that you even understand what you're saying because you know not everybody does who does light language is huge and then also why i did have to like open my eye every so often to see that also your hands moving um mm -hmm. to express this and maybe sign what you're saying yeah what is the experience like for you yeah it is like, I cannot explain it in words. So when I do light language healing, I feel I'm connected to the cosmos. Mm -hmm. I'm anchoring the newest updates. And when I move my body, I feel I can anchor it better. It's flowing better. That's what I do. And it, it seems to me like I do grid work as well with my hands. So when I use my hands, I do grid work. <laughs> oh, what do you mean by that? I mean, I understand ish, but what specifically when you say you're doing grid work? Yes, we are anchoring 5D and beyond into this reality here. So this is what grid workers do. So the ancient priests and priestesses, they did this work, what I remember. So I had visions of Atlantis, of myself, and we did grid work once. And we created powerful networks together, and we protected Earth and a planet with doing grid work. Hmm. When, before you did the light language, you were saying that um, we were talking about Mary Magdalene and that often that energy comes through. And I know the angels uh, caused you to mm -hmm. sing while you were doing the light language. So what about the divine feminine and what's mm -hmm. happening with that? Where are mm -hmm. we at right now? And mm -hmm. is there a healing possible? Yeah, both sides are rising. I feel the divine feminine is rising and the masculine is rising. Because everything we see in the old system is inverted. So we don't see the divine feminine, neither the masculine's power. power in the system. And I feel it's the divine feminine's power. She rises first. They go through a very deep womb healing process. So and I feel this strong when the solar flares are hitting the earth because they're pretty intense. And I feel it strongly in my womb. It feels like we heal and purge so much out from our ancestors, the deep trauma um, that we were at war with each other, that we women You know, the same. So the, the old system don't allow it for real that we express the ancient feminine energy we know from Egypt or the Atlantean times. So what I feel is she's slowly rising. That's why many people say they are so exhausted because now we see, uh, yeah, we are simply humans and we need a break sometimes too. And this is the divine feminine that we feel, hey, I need time. I'm allowed to receive. So I, I give and 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 I give. But is something coming back to me too? And this is our process of us women <laughs> that we give so much, right? 
and we feel ashamed of having something, right? It's like, no, no, I don't ask for help. I, I just help you, right? And I feel this process is strong. Yes, we see now we are allowed to surrender. I'm allowed to ask for guidance. I'm allowed to ask for help. I'm not alone. So and I feel this deep womb healing continues, yes. She rises first and with her, the masculine's power rises too. Hmm. Yeah. Are there ways that you recommend people embody this so they can assist with the healing? So I hear you saying, take time for yourself, focus on yourself, uh, receiving and allowing, welcoming mm -hmm. that, asking for help. What else? Mm -hmm. release the fear-based programming as well so many times we are afraid right when we give we are afraid to lose for example mm -hmm. or we are afraid to lose our money our material standards and the point is when you are in fear and you create out from fear fear will come back to you because the universe doesn't understand and the universe doesn't judge in good and evil. It just responds to your frequency. <laughs> so this means the more you have faith and trust and you create out from trust and faith, trust and faith is coming back to you. And this is the divine feminine. So you are safe because you will always find a way. Be like water. <laughs> and water finds always a way. So, and then... It will always come back to you, always. So when you surrender, when you have deep faith in something, be it in the galactic people or the angels, whatever it is, be it God or Yeshua. So when you have faith in something, life will respond because it's the frequency you embody. Mm. So when you embody peace, peace will come back to you. And this is the divine feminine. And we women nowadays, we are so afraid to ask for help. We are so afraid to ask for guidance. Ah, we are alone. We must do everything alone. <laughs> we try to control everything. And this is, yeah, what we learned, what we got taught. But when you have trust and faith, it will come back to you. So, and I did experiments many times the last years. That's why I know. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Because that's what I was going to ask is give us an example of a time um, that you had to, where it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. And then you finally had to surrender, ask for help, whatever it was you did to even surrender to the divine feminine and let it help heal yeah. the situation. Yeah, I must say the greatest push was to meet up with my twin flame. Oh, because yeah. I'm in union with my twin flame and this is a completely different connection. So I learned so much through it. I mean, I did so much healing already on myself, but as we met each other, I felt this strong push and we still heal and purge a lot together. We two together. And what I learned was that I'm not alone. And this was a problem to be honest, because I was alone. So no one was there for me. I had no support. I had to do everything alone, right? So, and it was a completely new experience for me to see, hey, there is a person and he sees me. Mm -hmm. He sees me so deep in all details, I cannot hide. So when you're in relationship with your twin flame, you will see you cannot hide <laughs> your issues, your share. It's not working. <laughs> everything comes up to the surface, really everything. Yeah, and then I saw, hey, I'm allowed to receive. I'm allowed to surrender. When I feel, hey, today pff, I must charge my batteries, then I allow myself to do so. Because I know my heart guides me and everything accords to the divine plan. And I cannot control the divine plan. I even cannot control my soul. But this is what many believe, that we can control it, that we can control our soul. But it's not working. And I must say, I learned this, especially through the twin flame connection, that it comes and it goes and everything what has to happen has to happen. <laughs> and you cannot control it. And when you say that you're, I mean, what a be first of all, what a beautiful thing to say that he sees you. I've seen the pictures. He's super cute. You guys are beautiful together. And the fact that he sees you, I can understand the power 
of what that must feel like. I don't think many of us can claim mm -hmm. that. And you also said, but still there's work to be done because with a twin flame, yeah. issues will come up. So how do you both navigate that? <laughs> At the beginning, it was not easy. <laughs> we both were triggered. Yeah, it was a totally new experience because like you see yourself. So when I look into Marcel's eyes, it's like uh, I see myself because we are the same soul, <laughs> just in two bodies. Yeah. And what we did at the beginning was this as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's you, Marcel. Each no, other. It's you. Yeah. yeah, at the beginning, yes. <laughs> what we understood is, no, no, when I'm triggered, hmm, there is work to do. <laughs> the same goes to Marcel. And what we do is we let everything out. So we don't say it's strictly forbidden. We let all our emotions flow, everything what comes out. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, then we are confronted with ourselves so deep. Mm -hmm. And then we cannot be mad for real. It's like we love each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like you cannot be mad. It's not working. So it's like you hurt yourself. <laughs> because it's the same soul. It's like when you hurt your twin flame, it's like you, you do this to yourself in all details. And this is really not working. What we do is we let it out. So we see the process. What has to do has to be done, right? So, and then after that, we hug each other. And it's like, we see each other. It feels like the love goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And this is really interesting. It feels like it's an endless journey. It doesn't stop. <laughs> and as much as you both show up to express yourselves when you're triggered and say it all, and then take responsibility and then hug each mm. other and allow the love to grow deeper. Yeah. What about the regular life journey? Like how deep is that love and experience between you two? How do you interact in general? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we can talk with each other telepathically very well, mm. but I must say Marcel was always good at this. He read all my thoughts <laughs> and this was really for me, totally new. Um, but now it's like we interact with each other telepathically or he receives a thought or a vision and then I say the same. And then he says, hey, I received the same message. I received the same message myself. <laughs> and then we know what to do next. The same goes to the regular life when we say, hey, I received the picture. I want to travel. And I say, I received the same picture. I want to travel today, too. So then ta da. <laughs> This is how our relationship works. Yes. Yeah. Many times we receive exact the same visions and pictures. <laughs> I'm so glad you found each other. That's really. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. And it happened unexpectedly. So both were single. I did a search up for a partner, Marcel not. We were both single. We were happy with ourselves. And suddenly we were guided to each other. Hmm. And then it begins. Yes, yeah, since five years now. <laughs> That's so, so lovely that you have that. And especially knowing how your life began, right? Because that's mm -hmm. not, not only lonely, that's very painful to feel that you're inherently wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all born, born perfect. So to have, I feel like life has this interesting way of balancing Mm -hmm. You know, this deficit here and then become this great strength or gift over here that we're given. Um, often we have to go through that dark night of the soul in order to rise up. And of course, body, always, always. Yeah. yeah, it's always the light and the dark. Always. Mm -hmm. And I know you're also said to be an artist. What kind of art do you do? Do you do sculpture? Do you do painting? Mm -hmm. light codes especially i train my vocal skills at the moment <laughs> strongly yeah and i love it also to draw and to paint that's what i do too with colors very traditional <laughs> oh, is that on your website no at the moment no at the moment no i need equipment to be honest but i love to do it yes so I did it since I'm a child so that I painted and draw and Japanese cartoons. I was fully in Japanese cartoons. Mm. Mm. 
Nice, really nice. Yes, yeah, but I want to do it again. And I love it to sing. This is what I do. Yeah, your angelic voice. Um, well, Akora, this is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and visions? I see more communities and groups in future for us all. Mm. So I see myself traveling more when the storm is coming. <laughs> I see myself traveling all over the world. So I love it to meet many different people and tribes and communities, events. And yeah, I see more communities in future all over the place. Is there a big spiritual community in Germany? No, not for real. Mm. A little bit, <laughs> but not much here. So where can people find you? I know we've got psychic medium dash Akura, A-K-U-R-A dot com. Where else can people find you? Mm -hmm. You find me on YouTube. Akura is the name. You find me on Instagram, official dot Akura. And on TikTok too, the same name, official.akura. Facebook too, by the way, <laughs> Akura, <laughs> the same name. <laughs> well, thank you, beautiful souls, so much for spending time with me and the Dare to Dream listeners and viewers. I am so grateful to know you now. And thanks for your gifts. Thanks for being thank here Thank you so, today. so much. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And I end today's show with this quote from Ara. My temple is my body, my world around me, my, my altar. My words are spells, every thought and intention, my actions, rituals. To manifest all that will be, I am sacred, I am divine. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation and leave a comment. I read them all and like it. Send this to somebody who you know will enjoy this conversation. Next week's show will be featuring the amazing Marina Serene. She's a 22-year-old experiencer from Spain. Marina is a hybrid, a psychic medium, an extrasensory seer, a conscious channeler, intuitive artist, an ET contactee, alien abductee, and so much more. Also a super soldier and insider. If you folks have been enjoying listening to this because you're listening to this on podcast and you'd like to see myself and Akora, go over to YouTube or Spotify. The videos are on both. It's youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Thank you in advance for subscribing. And remember, don't just dare to dream. Dare to turn all your dreams into your reality. You're a visionary. You're a spiritual messenger. And the world is waiting for you. Thanks for joining us.